This podcast is distributed for general informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to constitute legal, tax, accounting, or investment advice. The information, opinions, and views contained herein are our own and may be subject to change at any time without prior notice. All investment strategies and investment involve risk of loss. Any reference in investment past or potential performance is not and should not be construed as a recommendation or as a guarantee of any specific outcome or profit. Hey everybody, oh, it's been a while, but you know, it's summertime and things happen and uh, actually the great thing was is, you know, not a lot in the crypto world was going on, so it allowed for the vacations to uh, go unhindered, so got a few charts that we're going to go over here mainly for BTC, but we might look at ETH too, so... All right, well, let's just start looking at the monthly and, um, you know, what we what we see here. I'm going to take volume off just because we're looking at bit stamp volumes, not hugely important on this, important on these monthly levels when we're looking at bit stamp because their market share of the actual volume has gone down and been spread out to a lot of different other exchanges. So ultimately, if we look... We're just looking at the, the monthly, the moving average here in, you know, this uh, huge rejection here, or uh, support kind of pushing up off of this. You know, when we go down on the lower time frames from the monthly, uh, I mean, I'm still bullish. You can't not be bullish on the monthly with this. Uh, you know, we had to have some sort of correction when you're going green and you're going that way, so... Does it mean we're out of the woods? No, not until we break this all-time high and see that. Uh, am I going to be, you know, uber bullish? I, you, everybody knows that I'm, you know, bullish uh, as we go forward. But we've kind of made a, a nice move off the bottom, and we're going to see some resistance in this probably 47 to 60, uh, 60 range um, potentially. But uh, August is looking strong. July was great. Um, so. So anyways, let's uh, move through and see what we got. Uh, this was one uh, that we were looking at. Uh, I mean, I'm not a huge, uh, I shouldn't even probably start with this, but I'm going to because I clicked on it. So this was the, um, everybody was talking about the uh, Wyckoff distribution. Um, I got into it a little bit more only because we had your Wyckoff I guess you got Wyckoff accumulation, Wyckoff distribution up at the top here. You know, um, I've looked into it. I've read some on it. Uh, it does follow patterns. I like the idea of it, and I'll probably utilize it more in some of my trading. Um, not necessarily to for day trades, but for longer term, you know, holds and buys and, you know, trend flips potentially. So... If I look here, uh, you know, we had this, and at the time, for everybody that was in Wyckoff, was calling this as a Wyckoff distribution top, and and it really was, you know, it came down, and we saw that come through. Um, now, what we're looking at here is, there's one of two things, apparently, with the Wyckoff distribution, is you have this, um, you have this top, and you have a correction and then this should have turned over and dropped down to the next level if this was going to be a, you know, there's a there's a little pattern where it shows accumulation or distribution, 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 top, and then you're going to get the distribution, distribution, then bottom, and then up, which would put us all the way down to like 12K or something. But what we're seeing now is a uh, potential flip of uh, that here, and it's pretty technical along, uh, according to their, you know, the idea of, the different phases and whatnot and you know you have your spring the test uh, and then you're looking at this this build up I gotta pause this because this is a call I need to take
Sorry, I'm back. So I'll have to clip that out on the recording. But anyways, so uh, if you're looking at this, uh, this is the build up LPS. You know this this um, basically you're seeing the resistance of this area that it was before, and we saw it. You know re testing that breaking through back under the test again and this breakout and test this is the this is the the tell all so if you're if you're looking at this there's a couple of different plays um, you know you can play the spring uh, and watch it move through um, this was a big uh, spot I know a lot of people got into um, and then if you're doing just day trades then you have you know you would you'd want to you would want to probably take profits in this area and see where it's going if you're a long-term holder, you're just watching this to make sure that this is the flip. This is where we're going to move to. So as we'll see as we move into different charts, this is uh, another area of resistance that we'll probably see some downside um, and, you know, some moves in this direction here. And then hopefully it moves up like this. This is the this is the way it's supposed to look like once you get to this SO, SOS area. It's like, oh... We get some retests, some more accumulation, but again, you're going to see more of this lower, um, higher lows, higher low, higher low, um, retesting this area, and then the breakout and up. Um, we're going to see this area here. It is going to be your, that's that's your test area, right? So, in this anywhere in the area, making sure that these uh, now support zones are holding true, and on your higher time frames. Uh, specifically so you could break through and then still hold on the daily even if it gets that low um, that's something that we want to see and would be pretty bullish at that point in time and that's you know what we want to see on this this end so if we move into let's see where are we at here yeah let's do this one here so let's go back down to the daily and we got the Ichi cloud. So if you see here, let me take this off. If you look at the daily, uh, the, the big resistance on the daily is right around 46 to 47 um, with the flat top of the Ichimoku cloud. So that would give you your Ichimoku cloud edge to edge trade. Um, that's where that would, you know, come to fruition and usually, you know, is a, is a pretty, it's a pretty high, um, probability that we're going to see some really good reaction in that area. Looks like there's a little pullback right now when we go down on the four hour, but again, uh, if you're, if you're in, in a short term time frame to take profits, this is a great spot to start to look at, um, moving out, uh, and getting back in as we roll over a lot of times you'll see and we're going to look at a retest of these um, the, the um, TK which we had a TK cross here uh, and so as it moves through the cloud itself this is no trade zones but you'd want to see some reactions off of these which are essentially a type of moving average uh, in a sense um, for some re-entries which would probably line up with your again when we looked at that top for that Wyckoff distribution as this starts to move down, we're looking in this area here. So as this rolls over and we get into these areas, these are going to start to move up. And you can get some wicks through, potentially, but uh, great re-entries if you're looking at short-term trades. Uh, if you're looking at um, just confirmation that we're going to be moving higher, again, this would be a, a solid area to look at that. The breakdown of this and moving down to this area is a little bit more bearish, um, especially once we look at the amount of volume that's been bought up in this area. Um, let's do a little, I'll just add the VPR on this. So if you look at that volume, and you can see the volume gap here, right? So you're definitely looking at this as being resistance uh, and then filling this gap, which a lot of times can happen. Uh, this is not as large as this area here, but um, again, doesn't mean it has to go down to that. Uh, you can fill this and create new support because um, you're always going to have gaps, you know, no matter where you look 
at some point in time. But you just what you're looking for is a larger area of possible support. So as we move in and zoom in closer at where we're at, you can really see that that lines up almost perfectly with this volume profile and a move to this this time frame. So that's the Ichi cloud. Uh, kind of gives us this this idea on the short term time frame. Um, uh, and when I say short term, you're like talking, you know, a couple weeks, right? So move up and down and up through um, a, a week to two weeks. But that's what I'm watching right now. Uh, this is my confirmation. Obviously, with the Ichi Cloud on the daily, we're looking for, um, oops, we're looking for a bullish move above for continuation of the bull market. Is we want the cloud to flip green which as even if we're moving sideways in this area here, much like we talked about with the potential of um, the Wyckoff where it kind of comes down, up, you know, moves like this, and then up through. If that is a, a situation that does happen, this is going to continue to move up uh, in that same direction. In a point in time, we'll see a flip uh, to green and uh, that's your first indication that we are you know going bullish again the next is obviously this will happen much faster if this just blows through this area and comes up this way that's that's pretty aggressive um, would be pretty awesome um, I'd probably lose out on some profits because I'm gonna be closing a bunch here uh, but you know a move up into that 50k range uh, and then another retest of this top here and then to move forward that's again that's very bullish uh, we've had as you can see just a straight um, bull reaction off this bottom here so I would expect a little bit of consolidation uh, in the cloud uh, but then we see the cloud turns green we're above the cloud you know we're full go on a bull back into the bull market so this is we're in a good zone good bullish area love it um, this is great uh, let's look at a lot of people will talk about well I want to do the moving averages on this lower time frame here right so daily everything's crossing right you got your 50 um, well you got your your 20 EMA is moving it's up it's crossed everything you have your 50 and 200 uh, they're about ready to do the golden cross which we had the death cross here um, the fact that we moved above the 200 is awesome love it Let's keep that rocking. Um, sorry. Got a lot of stuff going on. Just back from vacation. So, uh, so, so yeah, so the 5200, uh, this is moving. Uh, we see that cross, golden cross, um, and this was just a correction. The, the great thing we see here is this test of the 200. It follows along with the Wyckoff as well. When you, I mean, a lot of these... They have different indicators and different ideas of, of what's happening and, and ex explanations, and um, but a lot of them will rhyme uh, the rhyme and rhythm of how they kind of uh, play off of them. They're similar. Some work really well together, some not so much. But as we can see here, we had the test of the 200 as it broke down, and then another retest and a breakthrough, and then the test for it being support, and then up and above. This is great. Uh, we want to see this continue to be support. Um, if you look, you know, anytime that you break above it, if you break back below it, you know, not the best thing in the world, not not the worst. Because again, if we look at this area here for that Wyckoff distribution, right, it's right, that lower end is right at the 200. Keeping that as support, I mean, that's that's key for this full bull, full bull movement. Uh, you talk at any point in time where, you know, the 200's tested, right? And if you're below it and you come back up above it, you want to stay above that 200, right? You can test it and you can contest it, but let's, you know, you stay above it. The moment we start going below that is bearish territory uh, on the daily, uh, and, and we don't want to see that. So, But everything's looking good here. Everything above, love it. Uh, keep that going. What do we got here? Uh, I know everybody likes to talk about stock to flow. So stock to flow, there. I have another one I'll show you as well. There's a heat map of it. Um, it's still in play. 
there's been many a times where it's been below this far and in a bear uh, bull market um, below your median line of the stock to flow talked about this before you know there was 800 percent 800 percent from those areas and when you look at this one right now it's a similar similar area right we're not that far below it so stock to flow still in play which an interesting model I mean obviously with a uh, fixed supply it should follow it pretty cleanly and keep the bullish momentum going this is uh, a site look into Bitcoin um, you can you can actually look at these for free on uh, look into bitcoin.com and see these same indicators that I'm going to show you here uh, I paid for them so I can use them on TradingView. Uh, they, I just like TradingView platform better for myself. So this is the stock to flow oscillator. Uh, really what it's showing you is points of accumulation time and points of sell time, right? So you want to be accumulating and then above you want to be essentially selling or if you're a long-term holder, this is where you're happy and you're just letting it ride. Uh, and then this is where you're buying or dollar cost averaging as uh, you know a lot of people should be doing um, so if you look at the heat map I think that's this one yeah so this is the stock to flow heat map and as you can see we're sitting right now currently in this kind of yellowish to greenish zone uh, and any in and below so we're in this area um, which needs a lot to catch up so if we're looking to catch up and do what we did in any of the other um, bull market time frames, crossed it, crossed it, got into the green, you know, the top of this green right now currently is, and remember this moves up as, as the stock to flow moves forward, uh, you know, you get anywhere close to that. These are our next targets on the stock to flow market. Uh, you know in this range so stock to flow is still in play it's an accumulation mode moving up through this is where you don't buy you just if you want to take profits you start to take profits you take you buy when it's down below it and it's ultimately what it's telling you so that is that one there the um, golden ratio multiplier is an interesting one um, you can kind of see where we're well below again that blue line sitting at the 168 mark um, it crossing over this this moving average as well kind of gets us into a spot that we like to be above it and moving high so uh, the one last one I want to show you on Bitcoin is Pi cycle top this was uh, a very accurate indicator that I for one did not um, take heat on because everything else was telling me that it was not time but this one has been super accurate so if you look at this cross um, and it's a tiny cross but it still is a cross regardless so the moment it crossed it, you know in this range you saw it moving right at the literal top right where it crossed I mean that you couldn't get more accurate than that there and if we we zoom out to basically sell this is showing the tops right and then if we look and zoom out and we zoom in in the next time frame where it was really another hit uh, of the cross the literal top right uh, and we can look at a couple more here where we crossed so this one was a little bit short you missed out on a little bit of profit but I mean this was so early on things were super violent with Bitcoin you were you know within a couple days of the actual top being in uh, in Bitcoin there so uh, on that part this was the one we had it was basically a double a double bull run in 2013 to 2014 and this cross here was literally another top uh, almost to the T so out of the four times that this is crossed one two three four it's hit it every single time on the dot within it within a couple days on this very first one 
it's a pretty accurate indicator that I will definitely be taking heat on a little bit more in the future. So, and what we're seeing now is again the price moving below and back above the lower moving average uh, here, uh, and we want to see it above it, right? Uh, I am in the in the I'm in the court of this was not a cycle top. Uh, it doesn't look like a cycle top, right? So is it a distribution top for a shorter time frame? Potentially. Um, when you look at overall the amount of distribution uh, and the short move that this had in relevance to other bull markets, uh, this just doesn't look nor does it feel like a top. Um, but again, we had this this short term time frame here. This is obviously much different with a higher vol velocity or volatility uh, in that time frame. But watching watching again this move in the next direction, we want to see this cross over the the green moving average itself, which ultimately is breaking an all time high right now and getting above that. We break an all time high, we'll, we'll get above that, and we'll get to a point where we're moving again in the same the same movement and looking for that pie cycle top at that point in time will be a very fun and interesting uh, ride in my opinion so things are looking good uh, let's uh, go right back down to this lower time frame I'll use this one just because we drew some squigglies and those are fun uh, again what I'm watching is on uh, Bitcoin is the the 46 47 range uh, I mean it just shows that we'll probably have some resistance. So that's what I want to watch. I want to make sure uh, I really would like to see this hold up for a continuation of the bull market on the higher time frames, daily and weekly. Uh, making sure this is now support. Um, and then we can move higher up into the 50s and 60s, 70s range. Historically, you have two time frames where people take a lot of money out of markets, all markets. Uh, you have your April 15th, you have your, actually I should say three, you have your April 15th, you have your September 15th, which are tax days, and then you have a lot of movement of money at the end of the year just for tax purposes and whatnot as well. Uh, so something to keep an eye on as the month moves forward and we get closer to that. And I think this year it actually got pushed out to October 15th. That I don't know um, because of COVID. Uh, I need to double check on that. I know my tax guys keeps telling me to get him information so either way we look at it um, it will probably play into that where we're at in that time frame I would love to be uh, retesting these all-time highs in September and uh, you know looking to move higher uh, once October November December hits and usually December is the mover for Bitcoin or I should say for Q4 is the mover for Bitcoin and then your alt will move uh, after that, usually that first quarter of the following year, uh, usually in that first month time frame, month or two. And then uh, that could potentially be our cycle top. Um, you know, if this is the move up, 100K plus is still in the play. It's not out of it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Um, so either way we look at it, this is a fun time. This this is good. It's exciting. So. Uh, I'm going to do a quick one on ETH. Let me do, uh, I'm going to go with Ichi Cloud on ETH. Uh, so let me pull that up for you. And we'll just go, oh, I don't want ETH, B well, yeah, let's do ETH BTC. Just first and foremost, as you can see, ETH BTC, ETH has had a nice move versus BTC, um, and, you know, since that, uh, that, this was that same spring movement as well, ETH moved greatly. We had a lot of movement with the EIP 1559. I think there's going to be a lot more movement coming from it with the um, uh, staking and that uh, ability to start to withdraw um, your staked ETH come probably, key, they say, I think the end of the year, beginning of the next year, that's pretty, I don't know. They seem to always push it out, but that's what they're saying right now for that to be available. Um, but between now and then, all staked ETH is ultimately you can't take it out. It's stuck in there. So, uh, and now with uh, EIP fifteen fifty nine, it's burning your Ethereum. Um, you're just looking at at 
it a, an asset that's um, looking stronger and stronger. If we look at on the Ichimoku cloud right now, we're in bull mode, right? So in ETH BTC, this is where you should be. That you're in bull mode, right? You're above the cloud, cloud's green. We did have a TK cross here. Um, if we get some more movement up, this should come back above and the you know continue that movement forward. Uh, I'm sorry, I was reading to This is the TK cross you want. Sorry, the oranges and blues got me mixed up. So you have the, the correct TK cross. You're above the cloud. Everything's looking good. If you look at resistance uh, and your trend lines and all of those fun things, right? You have trend uh, up down with kind of a bull flag ish kind of movement here that we've broken above in a retest. Uh, it's a potentially a retest down here, especially if Bitcoin decides to move and ETH doesn't doesn't move as much. But ETH looks pretty strong. So uh, in terms of the overall macro scale. Um, remember, we're not even at all-time highs yet for ETH BTC. So ETH BTC had some ridiculous. Oh, I mean, I don't know if Coinbase does the. I don't know what the best one is for ETH BTC for long term. What does it look like here weekly? So we'll do Binance here. So this was your top originally so just just getting back to an all-time high of eth versus btc got a it's a hundred percent so big range this i've been talking about eth for a while since ultimately the beginning of the year um and uh, i i'm just super strong with it i love what it looks like with eip 1559 just all the DeFi stuff the nfts as crappy of, of a protocol as it is for prices and everything else like that, it's not stopping the movement. NFTs are ridiculous, and you're paying gas fees, which are outrageous, and it's all supposed to get fixed, you know, with all these protocols that are getting implemented. It just makes me much more bullish on ETH. Makes me also bullish on all your layer twos and or layer ones that are operating at a at a much lower fee base, um, but. ETH is the first mover. They're still making moves to make it relevant, and everything's on that platform. So, with that being said, I'm bullish ETH long term for sure. Um, and let's look at ETH USD real quick. So I got some people asking me, why are you looking at ETH? Uh, why are you looking at BTC first? If you're so bullish ETH, why do you look at you know ETH second? Because realistically, ETH is second. Uh, BTC is the big dog, and when it moves, things will move again with it. And if they are moving against it in different uh, avenues, if uh, BTC is moving up and other things moving down, you should pay attention for why, or vice versa. If BTC is moving uh, down and other things are moving up, much like we had a um, mini little bull run for some of the gaming blockchain stuff when Axie moved up and everything else was down. So why was that, right? There was a lot of a lot of hype behind it. People saw the utility of it and everything else. So, and that's why I look at BTC first because it still is, it still is your major indicator. Um, and that's where the major use cases are coming into play with institutions and everything else like that. I'm just looking to make more money than what Bitcoin's coming up. So I like ETH as the as the move forward. And it's been playing out like we saw in ETH BTC. Uh, it's been playing out. ETH USD is looking really strong right here. So you have your TK cross. Uh, we're above the cloud. We're not quite green yet, um, but uh, you know I can see a retest of the 37. Does that be right? Well, right now we're looking at 35 coming up, potentially 35 range if it breaks through 37. You know, testing that, breaking that gap. So let's see, somewhere in this range would be a good a good feel for a if if this movement if this breaks here uh, what we're looking at right now at this with this strong daily um, and we move up uh, ETH was kind of the first mover Bitcoin's moved a little bit further on this last move if Bitcoin's the one that's moving up and we see here I can see you know this 
next move, uh, breaking this and then retesting this time frame. And if you're if you're not a day trader, again, like most of you are not. Oh, no, I shouldn't say day trader. I hate day traders because I don't trade daily. I don't hate day traders. Sorry, I just I dislike day trading myself. I it it's a lot. It's very time consuming, uh, and you, you just have to really rely upon a lot of um, just chart watching and everything else. I love to watch the charts, but I also love to go out and go camping with my family and other things like that. So this is I don't day trade. I'll make weekly trades. Uh, I set myself up so I can take time off. Um, but if you are trading, you know whether it's day trading, weekly trading, if you're in and out of assets, this is where I really want to watch. I want to make sure this is maintained uh, on the bullish side on the four hour with the Ichimoku cloud. Uh, these trend lines, the the Tenkin and the Kijun, uh, or the conversion conversion line and the baseline, are in this same pattern up. The moment we start to see this transition in this scenario here where you get the rollover right and across of this that's where we we're going to want to see I'll probably start to take profits which will probably be up around I'll start to take profits here and see what's happening as we move around and down in this range uh, this is your big uh, trend line right we see some some actual trend movement on this line here if it goes down through you can see the clouds going to be at that same spot that would be bearish you know, on the four hour moving below that. But right now everything's looking super bullish on ETH. Uh, you can definitely see that we're having some movement in other altcoins uh, that are out there. Uh, I personally am not in any other altcoin but Gala. Um, I've been messing around with BitTrue and their, their 3x long stuff, um, which is a very interesting play. Um, but overall, I'm in, we're in a good spot. Uh, it's fun to watch, um, and everything's kind of coming into this this resistance zone of last time. Where are we going to be at, and um, how's that going to react? Is this just a dead cat bounce all the way through, and then we're going to see some lower movement? If you were in a spot where you were um, you bought high and you don't like the asset and you're kind of afraid, well. We might have some time for you to take some profits. So, um, but either way, we're looking at it. Lots of money. We've got the infrastructure bill that's coming through. Got to watch that. Um, that's that's kind of a uh, with the with the cryptocurrency stuff that's been kind of hidden in there in this infrastructure bill. That's going to be a big deal for all proof of stake, proof of work, um, how that's taxed in the U.S. and will probably drive out a lot of the industry in the US which is not a good thing so that's that's going to be an issue it doesn't come into play until 2023 so um, if, even though if it's voted on now but still something to watch out for something to keep an eye on and uh, alright if you've got anything else you want me to do uh, give me a holler and I will um, most definitely uh, see if I can chart it for you peace